So yeah, I was in a conference with, you know, the owner of Audacity, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Kid Cudi. There I was. I asked Lady Gaga, what the f oh, I spilled water everywhere. Quick question, no edit. You guys uh, ever have stuff that happens that's like, it just feels like, oh man, that's so me. Like, of course that happened to me. <laughs> like right now, my water wasn't even that full. It's, it's a matter of my water wasn't that full and I didn't even spin that fast. Yeah, the second question was if you guys like Jeff Rosenstack. Is that his name? Rosenstack? Um, I made a playlist on YouTube. I just started it recently. You know, just random. Like, it's not even like I would look it up. Some of them I looked up. Like, if I hear somebody say, like, hey, this is pretty good. You should listen to it. I just throw it in this, this playlist on YouTube. And then, you know, then I started thinking of just random names. Like... I, I genuinely think, you know, I heard Anthony Pantana one time say, hey, Jeff Rosenstock. He might have said, you know, that dude fucking sucks. Never listen to him. Like, whatever you do, avoid him. But I, I just, in my brain, I just remembered Jeff Rosenstock, and I threw it on a playlist. And, yeah. And then 9 out of 10 comes up, like, for whatever reason, when I put this playlist on shuffle... Even though I have just hundreds and hundreds of videos, it only plays the exact same, you know, like, 10 tracks. I've heard, like, the same 10 tracks from this hundred, you know, it's probably like 500 videos or something, and it just keeps playing the same tracks. But I'm not even mad because it played 9 out of 10 by, uh, I think it's Jeff Rosenstock, and damn, that shit fucking bangs. It's absolutely fire. I'm definitely checking this dude out. I just thought about it right now, and I'm like, yo, what? Yo, what? Who the fuck is Jeff Rosenstock? Why is this track bang so hard? And what's with the video? I think it was one of those, like, you know, I've... Damn, my controller's been dying for, like, five years. I've, I've charged my controller one time. I think it was, you know, that first time on um, Spyro. I charged it at one point around then. And it's, it's, it's still been, like, ready to die at any moment. Still Biggie Smalls ready to die. And also, let me know, is Anthony... I think Anthony Fantano has mentioned him in, like, a good way. I think it's one of those... I could be completely wrong. But I think it's one of those that, like, back in the day, he, like, really fucked with him. Damn, everyone, you know, you're just gonna have to do one of those, like, you know, yes, no... Uh, three years ago type uh, <laughs> This is gonna be one of those type comment sections because I want you to answer all kinds of questions because now um, I want to know Do you guys like reviews? Not for my sake My reviews are gonna be fucking sick. I, I you know, I don't need your opinion on those But I want to know like cuz I watch a lot of reviews If there is a review for something I'm gonna watch it, you know that's basically how I feel, like, music, games, hardware, you know, like, before I got the Elgato, you know, I was looking that up, like, anything, really, um, I'm usually in the realm of, you know, games and stuff like that, but, you know, pretty much any kind of review, I even looked up, I was more just curious, because I see this, this kind of stuff everywhere, and, it's, it's almost always nonsense, and I hope that, like, I'm not the only one who, like, sees through it. That, you know, like, I actually looked up Manscaped, like, a review, just because I was like, listen, what what is so great about this, you know, shaver than all the other ones, you know? And just because I was curious, sometimes I'll see, my face is itchy as fuck. <laughs> you know, like, um, or, like... I, I remember, this is what started it, actually. You know, not that I'm trying to throw shade or whatever. But, you know, I used to watch a lot of H3. I don't know if it was, like, on his H3 podcast or what, but... It's like, you know, he would talk about me undies, and I'm like, you know... Who doesn't like a nice pair of underwear? Like, just, you know, don't give me any, any trash for that. You know? I was like, okay, let's see, you know... 
how much these are. Maybe just get like a couple pairs or something. I was like, bro, I don't remember how much it was, but it was something ridiculous. And I'm like, no. So now it is kind of every now and then when I watch like a have like a podcast on or whatever and they, they advertise something. Sometimes I just look it up just because now I'm curious like how expensive these things are because they're always like extremely overpriced. And I remember I, you know, I started watching a review for uh, Manscaped and one of them, one of the videos was just like why you should never buy it. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. I forget what I was doing, like trimming my nails or something and I just wanted something in the background. And I looked it up and, and yeah. I think that's about about it with with manscaped i don't know where i was going with that but yeah what do you guys feel i, I know there's a lot of people who fucking hate reviews or whatever one of my friends i don't know i'll throw anthony fantano out there or whatever and he's like dude fuck that guy what do i care what he thinks if i like something i'm gonna like it you know he's not gonna change my opinion but i'm like well that's the whole point I'm like if i like something i, I want to get other people's opinion on it that's what i like or it's either that like you know like it, it's very strange because it's not like it's my album you know but i i love hearing people talk about albums that i love or whatever hearing their opinion and things like that even if it's negative it's just like okay it's just interesting to me or to, to see you know if i want to buy something or you know, something new, you know, sometimes I watch Anthony Fantano for, honestly, sometimes it's just the cover art alone, that's actually how I found JPEG Mafia to begin with, which, um, you know, I keep bringing up, like, every freaking episode of this, but I see him review JPEG Mafia, and I was like, damn, that cover art looks dope as fuck, that was literally it, I was just like, damn, for veteran, I was like, that's like the dopest cover art, I'm like, this just got a bang. You just know. Like, it didn't even matter what genre or anything. I'm like, if it's got a cover art that goes that hard, it's got to be good. And that was literally it. And then he, he yeah, gave it a really positive review. And I was like, all right, I'll check this dude out. Yeah, and that's, they could, you know, honestly, almost everything that I'm into is just like, the cover art was so dope that it had me interested. Even like, Death Rips. Like, I seen like, the Anthony Fantano's review for um, No Love Deep Web, and I kept thinking I'm like, what kind of fucking cover art is that? I, I <laughs> for those um, who actually know what the cover art is, for most places, it's very censored. And on Anthony Fantano's, it's like the black bar version. And I'm like, what? in the fuck kind of cover art. That was the first time I ever seen anything that was like that bizarre. I was like, I genuinely have no fucking idea. It's like tiles and like a big black bar. And then when I watch the review, I'm like, oh, okay, it's a penis. You can't have a giant penis on the front of a, your album on YouTube. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah. And too, you know, um, there are certain things where it's like, people don't talk about it, you know? I, I meant that in general, like there are certain games where I'll look up a review or whatever and I, it's just genuinely not there, and I'm like, this is the most bizarre thing. Even like, um, I was looking up reviews for GTA 4, you know, only one of the biggest games of all time. And there aren't, like, that many reviews. Like, you know, I was looking for... Because I figured, you know, GTA 4... A lot of my reviewers that I'm super into have reviewed, like, all the other ones, but not GTA 4. In particular, they just, like, avoided it. You can't find reviews for it. So I'm like, what the fuck? There were some, obviously, but... Not as many as I was expecting. But I'm trying... I, I just can't remember what else it was that looking for but and as I've mentioned too I'm super into the game fear and that's how I found uh, yeah I'm pretty I'm pretty sturdy on the fact that G-Man is my favorite uh, reviewer and that's how I found him is like I said I was playing fear and I was like this game is dope as fuck and I, I looked up a review 
And he said the same thing. And the first, you know, couple seconds, he was like, I could have two games. Well, he's like, if I could have one game, you know, if, it's one of those, like, if you were stranded on an island, you only had one game forever. And then he said, like, oh, you know, I'd play Doom, and then my second would be Fear. And I'm like, dude, this guy gets it. Like, that's, that's all I needed to hear. And I'm like, all right, subscribe, <laughs> you know? All right, here's question number five or whatever the fuck. I don't even know what number I'm on. But here's another question. Is that if you do watch reviews, or, well, just in general, do you... In general, I get, like, infatuated with things. And I'm trying not... I just don't want things to be too hard. That's why I'm uh, playing on medium, not focused, like, that, that hard. But I guess just in general, do you guys get, like, infatuated with things? And I'll break down what that means. It's just like, cause just to start with reviews, um, I don't know. Like, man, like it's one of those things where I've mentioned, you know, sort of like just being kind of like blacked out in a way, where it's like I just totally like I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll watch the same review over and over and over. Man, like a ridiculous amount of times, and I don't know why. Like there'll be times, and it usually happens where I'll watch it, and I'm like, why the fuck did I watch that? I already knew, I know like every word to this fucking review, but I just keep watching it over and over and over. It's like I gained nothing new, and I knew that going in, but I just keep watching. It. I don't know why. It's really kind of bizarre, but. Yeah, but uh, that's just, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of like, for my own sanity, I kind of want to see if, if other people, if there's at least one other person that just watches the same shit over and over. Um, but also, and I don't think this is very bizarre. I think this is, in a lot of ways, well, you know, people like things for different reasons, so it's not really, um, I don't really care that much. Shoot. What? But... With albums, too. And I know I've mentioned this as well already, but I really, with every album, I just listen to it over and over and over. How many, speaking of over and over, how many times am I gonna get, gonna get hit with a rocket? I keep getting freaking bragged. But yeah, I'll listen, when I start listening to literally any album, I just play the crap out of it. It's either I listen to it like, once, one time to like three times or whatever. Shoot, come on, come on, don't go, don't! Okay. I'm not used to playing this character. All the stats are maxed out and it feels really bizarre. Like the game, I don't think, the game is not designed to have maxed out stats. This character even wasn't even supposed to be in the game. It's like a mistake, but. But yeah, so. You know, I'll listen to an album until it's like, yeah, like until I know every word, basically. It's not like that's the goal, but in, it's like, I don't, you know, I feel like I didn't get make the most of it until I know every little, like, detail. Until I'm like, okay, like, until, yeah, I literally listen for the crap out of it. And, yeah, let me know if you guys do the same thing. I know there's a lot of people who, bruh, like, and it's not that I, it's not, like, the biggest thing to me, but sometimes, okay, <laughs> some of my friends and people that I've met in general, I get, you know, we listen to different, yeah, we listen to different music, but we also listen to music differently. Like, I remember there was, there's... One time we were listening to Nikes, and <laughs> man, like, <laughs> tell me I'm not the only one who thinks that um, balls sticking to his jeans part is kind of, um, yeah, I don't know, I'm not, uh, yeah, it's kind of a bizarre line, honestly. And is he not wearing underwear is kind of also another, whatever. Or uh, some of my friends are really into Nav, and for whatever reason, I was just thinking of the only line by Nav that I, my brain, could even 
pick out. He's he's got baguettes, like he, he's working at a bakery or something. Well, even not that because now I'm kind of being a, a dickhead, but there are times where they'll throw a line at me and they're like, you know what track that's from? And I'll be like, yeah, I know. That. You know, I, I kind of like that. I'm like, you know, challenge me if it's something that I actually know. Then that's different. Or one time. It was when Takashi was at like his peak, at least uh, up to this point. And one of my friends, they put on a track, and it was like very out of his realm. And I don't, I've never listened to Takashi ever, not even a track once, except for I guess this one time. <laughs> like he just doesn't, he's not the kind of guy I want to get into, and that's just. Opinion. But he put on a track and he's like, bro, guess who this is? And I'm like, ah, oh, bro, I don't know. And he's like, bro, you know him. You listen to him all the time, bro. You know who this is. And I was like, bro, I have no fucking clue. Like, I've never heard this person before in my life. And they were giving, he's giving me so much shit. And it's Takashi. And I'm like, bro, I've never once listened to him. <laughs> you know? How do you not know this track? I'm trying to think. There's only like, the only lines that I know or whatever is like the, the blicky. Like, bro, that's that's all I know about Takashi 69 and that's it. Okay, here's a little backstory. I mentioned it at one point, but I'll mention it again, because it's, it's kind of bizarre. You know, it's like, it's one of the best type of like cut content because you can still access it. So I forget exactly, I could be a little bit wrong, but from what I remember, is that this, uh, they were gonna add this character that I'm racing as the penguin. But they didn't finish for some reason. So they just, they're like, oh, you know, whatever. We're not gonna put him in the game. But then for whatever reason, like through a cheat code or whatever, I, maybe that's how it was supposed to be like through a cheat code, but then they accidentally left him in to the game when it wasn't supposed to be in the game. And uh, I don't have my headphones on, but I'm sure you've heard and be like, you know, Penguin Yay 1 or whatever. <laughs> Penguin Yay 2. Which is, you know, like just placeholder dialogue for where they would put, you know, whatever the Penguin Yay sound would, would sound like. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of torn uh, in the new um, Crash game. It's like he's in a penguin voice, but he still says Penguin Yay 1. It's just kind of like really bizarre and I mean you know not to say that this dialogue here isn't kind of bizarre but different kind of bizarre I guess and yeah like you know this is one of those kinds of games that's like you know I feel like a lot of people should definitely play this version just because it's like so crazy that this is this was done at this time you know I think if a lot of people would pick up like Mario uh, Mario Kart 64 and be like oh you know well this is just kind of a product of its time and I've uh, I've only played Mario Kart 64 one time when I was like five so this could be completely wrong but you know there's a lot of games where you pick it up and I'll just say you know N64, PS1 in general, or even older, or even newer, you know, even PS3 or whatever, where people can pick something up and be like, oh, you know, this is kind of slow or whatever, this is just a product of its time, though, and you kind of have to appreciate it for what it was. But this one, once you get used to the way that it functions, it's like, bro, this still holds up so well. I pick it up every now and then, and at first it's like, what the fuck? Actually, maybe it's even just my TV. I was The last time I played this one was on a different screen. And it felt like it was like, the input was just, yeah, input lag or whatever. But right now, this feels like perfect. And I don't know, I mean, I've played it a couple times since then. Um, this feels really good. I mean, not as good as like, you know, the re... I was gonna say the Reignited Trilogy, the Nit Nitro Booster, the Crash Team Racing, Nitrous, um, Nitro Fueled, 
<laughs> the, the, cra the Crash Bandicoot Definitive Trilogy, or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, this feels really good. It, it could very well just be the screen that I'm playing on. And we were last time, the time when we were playing it, and it felt really bad. We were playing two player, so it might just be extra laggy. We were trying to play three player at there. At, no, it was two player. I, I couldn't figure out what the controller input. And if you played, if you tried to play um, three player PS1 games on the PS3, you could wrap your head around what I just said. Um, you would know that, yeah, you really have to, you have to want it because you have to change up the input. It was always dope as fuck. You know, like some people might be, you know, Hear something like that and be like, oh, you the next one. But the thing that's, that was really dope about PlayStation, I remember having a hard time on Xbox, was changing who was like player one or whatever, or there, this and that. And even to this day, to this day, it's never been as easy as PS3. At least as far as I know. I don't even know how they do it on PS4. Might They might have even gotten rid of it again made it another a bigger problem but on ps3 and if you're in the know then you just know and we we utilized the fuck out of this feature i swear to god um if you you know if you played with multiple people before you know sometimes you know like one person turns on the controller before the other one and then it's like you know you could just switch controllers sometimes that causes a problem of its own but what you could do on PS3 was in the you press the home button you go to like controller settings or whatever and you could change on the fly instantly You'd be like oh I'm player two change it to player one and that's it dude that was sick as fuck hold on let me see it controller settings and that's it you just change here and like I said on um when you look at all this shit if you want to play you know how many players you gotta change all this stuff and you gotta know what's what but here that's it you just change it oh shit look at that timing yeah and I, I can't can't stress it enough honestly it was a lifesaver a few times you see I'm trying to think it was something where um, you know if you if one person like knew the, the settings or whatever but they wanted to have you just change it without like if you change controllers sometimes it was like you lost you couldn't play as a certain character or something or you know whatever I forget at this point what it was sometimes or you're like you know you had your certain settings because it wasn't just um, for PS1 games like I was saying before if you wanted to play like at least three players you had to really mess with a lot of settings which kind of sucked but if you're playing like PS3 games sometimes it would be uh, if you know you know and it probably was even for like Xbox and stuff as well where it's like I don't know I'm thinking of like Minecraft right now where it's like yeah or a uh, COD or something you know player one would kind of have you know all the the rank and stuff and like player two would be like player one part two or whatever and you know you would be like well fuck you're gonna have all my settings my glasses damn you know, but then on the fly, before even the match started, you could be in the lobby and you're just, you change it over where it's like, okay, now you're player one, I'll be player two. We don't have to change controllers, we don't even have to speak. That shit was dope. Just uh, PS3 things. Hashtag PS3 life. I was gonna say too, um, I thought it was funny yesterday at work, I was thinking, I'm like, damn, Mike, oh, let me see if I can do this, last lap, oh, oh. yesterday I was thinking about it, I'm like, damn, there are some people who just don't know when to shut the fuck up, and then I was like, that's me when I get home, which is the total difference, is that, at work and with other people, I let people speak and you know say whatever they gotta say and you know give them their 
their time to shine. And then I was thinking that, like, even just the very first day when I uh, started doing a recording, is as soon as I finished, I'm like, damn, like, did I ever, like, breathe at any point, or did I just, like, just spouting shit off just constantly? Listening back to it, I feel like it worked pretty well because I don't want to leave too much open space. You're not here to, you're not here for the gameplay. At least I don't think so. I mean, partly. I'm, I'm someone who watches a lot of um, playthrough type. That just, it doesn't sound right, but it, it is, you know, like just watching people like play games, but it's usually not what they're playing. It's about the commentary, but at the same time, if they're playing a game, if they're, well, it's both, where it's like, if they're playing a, a dope-ass game, I'm more likely to click, but if they're playing, and if they're playing a stupid shit game, then I'm more likely to say, oh, look at that, to skip it, but even though it's about the commentary, so. And almost all, I can't, you know, I'm obviously not the only one to do solo but like all the people that I watch they, they have like they have friends but I'm trying to keep that same like hectic energy but just by myself and I also kind of have that personality where I just never shut the fuck up at least you know when I have an opportunity like this or if I'm with friends where I feel like I can do that but when I'm at work and stuff, I, you know, I'm pretty reserved. Or if I'm meeting someone new and things like that, I feel like that's the right thing to do. Sometimes I'm at work and you know, people just like, never shut up. <laughs> you know, not that it's necessarily a bad thing. But that people feel comfortable or whatever with me at times. But actually, yeah, um... And again, no offense to this dude, but we just got a new guy at work, and I've been bringing, I've been watching videos at work in on uh, FL Studio and things like that, trying to learn the ins and outs of that. Sometimes this dude wants to like talk all lunch long, and I'm like, bro, listen. And again, like, I don't want, I, I'm trying, I'm really trying to avoid just constantly trying to give my opinion on what, um, on things to, to get you where you need to be. But again, I just want to throw it out there that, you know, you got to put yourself first, even beyond, like, your friends and stuff like that sometimes, because it's like, even if it was, like, my best friends trying to talk to me at lunch, it's like, right now, I'm in grind mode. Like, it's more important that I study right now and, and talk to you guys because this this, is, this could benefit all of us if I really get my grind on right now or it's like it won't benefit anyone it'll benefit your lunchtime or whatever if I talk to you instead so, yeah, right. you gotta put yourself first sometimes it's like you know once a week or so I just try to be like okay you know what I'm gonna go out and get lunch, things like that. I'm gonna talk to my my friends and stuff, but otherwise it's like when I'm at home, I want to utilize that time to the maximum. It's like okay, I wanna record. I already made a beat today that I thought was pretty sick, and that's the only reason I'm here right now. I was like, okay, today I'm gonna make a beat. I'm gonna spend my time making beats, and I made a beat that was pretty dope. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's getting late where it's like, you know, if I if I start making another beat and it kind of flops, then I'm going to feel like I wasted my time a little bit. Where it's like, now I feel like, you know, I get a, a blend of both. Get some chilling time, play some games, but also, you know, if I start playing games and I wasn't recording, then I kind of feel bad. I'm not really doing shit. Playing Crash Team Racing, I, I would honestly feel really bad. Sometimes I feel, uh, sometimes I play these kind of games or whatever. Even if I feel like I deserve it deep down, once I start playing, I'm like, you know, I just kind of wasted my time or whatever. Where now, at least, it's like I'm doing something. And I really wish that the online, uh, Nintendo Online was, was good because I really want to play, like, 
Mario Kart 64, so I can compare. You know, I really want to do a review of Crash Team Racing. It's dope as fuck. There's so many people who, you know, it seems like, you know, everyone with, like, a voice on YouTube, at least back in the day, they were all Nintendo fans. Not that there's anything wrong with that inherently, but it's like everyone wants to talk so much smack. PS3, you know, PlayStation in general finally has its place where it deserves to be. And it's not like, you know, PS, PlayStation in general, I want to just keep saying PlayStation in particular, but just in general, we just got to give PlayStation its, its flowers, man. If you were around for like early YouTube and shit in, in the PS3 era, everyone just shit on the PS3, it feels like. And I had, I had an Xbox 360, like it, and for a, a period of time, I had an Xbox 360, a PS3, and my grandma had a Wii. So it was like, I had all three systems at the same time that I could mess with. And it was like, you know, um, at that time too, I just want to stress again, just so you know, you have the context. It was like, I had, I really only had one of them. My dad would have either the Xbox or the PS3, we'd kind of switch around. And uh, my grandma had the Wii, and I would only go over there like during the summer and stuff like that. So, it's like I always had at least some kind of console, and I didn't always get to play them or anything like that. All my dad's my case <laughs> but yeah I spent a lot of time on the, on the 360 because that was just how it ended up being you know like if my dad had a, a game that he wanted to play on a certain system or whatever then he would have that system I you know just by default I wasn't gonna complain and be like ah! you know like I <laughs> so I spent a fair amount of time on the 360 and it just wasn't, you know, it was cool, it was fine. But, you know, everyone was always talking shit about the 360. And maybe it was just, you know, the kids I was around or something. But I feel like even on the internet, everyone was, you know, smack talking the PS3. It's like, bruh. You know, Xbox wasn't that great. I prefer PS3 any day. And I'm glad that at least now it's like people who are finally getting it. Or at least like, you know, I see people who are like, hey, you know some respect on the PlayStation, bro. There was a lot of shit going around. It felt like nobody was on on our side here. Even too, like, man, the disrespect. And listen, you know, whatever, you know, let, let the facts show that, yeah, okay, Mario Kart 64 came out first, and maybe it, compl it could easily have completely completely inspired Crash Team Racing and it wouldn't Crash Team Racing could have never existed whatsoever if it wasn't for Mario Kart 64. And not even that, you know, I'm saying I'm like staking my my place even if I was it wouldn't be a controversial opinion, but I'm not even saying that it's better than Mario Kart 64 because again, I haven't even played it. But man, like it's doing its own fucking thing. Just because it's a kart racer doesn't mean, you know. Oh yeah, they're, they're just cashing in on the success of Mario Kart 64. It's just a complete ripoff. But, cause I was just thinking that last level there, I think I remember playing, uh, um, what is it? Uh, it's either Wario, uh, the Wario mud level or um, Waluigi. And I don't think I liked it like at all. I'm like, this level kind of sucks. I didn't, that was actually my least favorite level for a long time. The one I just played right now, Tiny Arena or whatever. But now it is, it's really fun, you know? I don't feel like it, it just completely ripped it off. It made its own thing, you know? Hold on. 